but we just have to recognize if anything i would say it's the princess right it's it's the it's super young um what is it 2022 so you have a 13 year old hello everyone today our guest is gareth soloway in this video gareth soloway speaks about the latest feds rate hike inflation recession crypto and bitcoin price and bottom and discusses the state of the economy if you enjoy this highlight videos please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content thank you if the fed remains hawkish we are likely to see markets test lower lows and remain muted until inflation figures appear to start improving. Joe DiPasquale, CEO of cryptocurrency hedge fund manager Bitbull Capital, told Coindesk. Bitcoin whipsawed in the hours after the announcement, but sold off later in the afternoon along with U.S. stocks. As of press time, Bitcoin was changing hands just below $19,000. As recently as last week, the largest cryptocurrency had traded above $22,000. The federal funds rate will rise to a range of 3% to 3.25%, the highest since late 2007. The rate had stayed near zero for more than two years. Traders are currently betting that the federal funds rate will go above 4.25% before central bankers pause the campaign. So the mentality and, and having the mental acuity kind of and, and, and form is, is really amongst the biggest things. Like I can teach anyone how to look for a chart setup, but the hardest thing to do is to get your mind conditioned to not get swayed because everything about the markets, the markets function on a masses basis, meaning that the markets will run up and get the most people long possible before they reverse and they'll wait and wait and wait until everyone is long and then they'll sell off and vice versa on the other side they'll get everyone in that panic crazy state and that will be the bottom so by working on your emotional control and your kind of discipline you have to get to a point where you recognize and don't get swayed by those type of things Otherwise, you end up being part of the crowd that that gets long. Go, you know, you buy Bitcoin at sixty nine thousand or sixty eight thousand right before the reversal, and and that was one of the beautiful things about it is I was able to look at the hysteria behind Bitcoin, not only using the technicals to project a twenty thousand dollar target, but also noticing that the 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 hype was at a level that told me the end was at hand, and that was such an important thing for avoiding being long Bitcoin, but in fact also being short Bitcoin on the way down. How is the hysteria right now in the bear market? Hysteria is kind of right now; it's kind of neutral, believe it or not. So, so we've seen we've seen a bounce in Bitcoin where you have we have some people starting to call. Okay, the seventeen thousand five hundred level on Bitcoin was the low. Um, and then you have other people still saying, oh, well, I still think there's more downside. Like myself, the charts still tell me there's more downside. But you're not seeing an overwhelmingly am crazy amount of, of bearish, hysterical sentiment, which to me is an indicator that we haven't fully bottomed yet. You have to get to a point, whether it's the stock market, commodities, or, or crypto, you have to get to that crazy state of panic, of absolute insanity fear for it to finally bottom out. And we just haven't seen that in crypto yet. And what does that look like? Does that mean all the markets are tanking? How can you tell if hysteria has really hit? Yeah, so what you, one of the things you wanna look for is you wanna look for people that are just throwing in the towel because it's too painful, right? So, so certainly coming down to 20,000, you had some of that and even piercing 20,000 on Bitcoin, but you didn't get people saying, you know what, Bitcoin's not going to be around anymore. It's going away. It's going to fail. You need to see that type of fear come in where people that were long at 68, 69,000 now are saying, oh, it's, it's, it's a goner. It's, it's not going to survive. And that's where the low will be put in when you get that absolute kind of crazed, kind of irrational panic. Just like it was irrational at the highs, you look for that irrationality at the lows as well. Right now, the moving average, I think on the weekly is like at 70. I, I just checked before this interview started, which is really crazy. And it's like the lows are getting higher on the moving average too, which is a bit scary if you ask me. Um, what does this mean for Bitcoin? Yeah, so here, let me show my charts here and, and we'll yeah. take a look. 
So basically, you're right. I mean, we first of all, the, the dollar has just had one of the most remarkable rallies, even just this year alone, to go from about 95 bucks all the way to 112, 111 on the Dixie. I mean, percentage-wise, historically, that almost never happens where a, a stable, so-called stable currency like the dollar would gain that much traction. But one of the things you can see is it has a very clear, defined trend line right here. So you can see we, we kind of topped out right here. Um, we've pulled back now and we've seen the stock market rally. We've seen cryptocurrency rally. So I think the most important thing about the dollar is to recognize that a weaker dollar right now is exactly what risk on investors want. They mm -hmm. want to see that dollar coming in because what it, it indicates is that the Fed may not be as aggressive in terms of hiking rates. It all kind of trickles through the Federal Reserve and what expectations are for the next policy meeting and the policy meetings after that. So with the dollar pulling back, we've seen the response and I could show you the SPX chart here, which is the S&P 500. You can see it coordinates perfectly with this move up right here. So um, S&P up when the dollar pulls back and same thing with Bitcoin. If you look at Bitcoin BTC here, you can see that this rally on Bitcoin coordinated perfectly with that pullback in the dollar as well. So again, dollar down assets, prices go up. Um, we know we get the CPI nut data coming out here shortly, and then also we'll get the job, the um, the Federal Reserve statement later in September as well. So, so to me, it's it's not going to last that much longer. I think the markets are going to see the dollar snap back a little bit, but right now it's party on. Just so overbought. Like the last time we saw this was in the '80s, right? And the interest rates were like insanely high, and our interest rates yeah. now are not even anywhere near close to that. Yeah, so I think the dollar, the dollar has a few things working towards it or working for it. Um, number one, the Federal Reserve has talked the, the most hawkish game. We saw Jackson Hole's comments from Jerome Powell. We've seen you know him coming out continually and just being super, super hawkish. We're going to raise interest rates as much as we need to. And what that does is it strengthens the dollar because as expectations for higher interest rates. So basically, when, when interest rates go up, it, it draws money out of the economy, right? So it sucks money out. So you have less dollars in the economy to be invested or, or to just in general be, be used. And that creates a stronger, it's a supply demand basic mentality of less dollars and equal demand means the, do, the price of the dollar must go up. Then you also have the scenarios where you have the risk of Russia with Ukraine, these global geopolitical issues, which historically have had investors rushing into the dollar for safety. So there's that added aspect as well. And then you also have the, the kind of the economic aspects where we know that Europe is struggling, their economy is likely going into recession. We have other areas of the world, maybe the whole world heading towards a global recession. And the same thing, it makes people want to buy the dollar for safety. So, you know, everyone talked, and this is crazy because in 2021, it was all about the demise of the dollar. The dollar is going to collapse. That's why Bitcoin is going to keep going to 100 to 200 to 300, right? Thousand, obviously. Um, but in reality, the dollar has been the best performing asset out there um, in spite of, of all that chatter. And again, that's just basically because the dollar is still king on the block. You know, you, you have yen, they're printing just as much, if not more. Europe is the same thing the dollar is still the reserve currency of the world. And then what does that make? Bitcoin? And then what does that make Bitcoin the queen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, eventually, eventually, I do think Bitcoin um, becomes a stable store of of money of a way to diversify out of fiat currencies, right. But we just have to recognize if anything, I would say it's the princess, right? It's it's the it's super young. Um, what is it 2022? So you have a 13 year old that eventually will grow into the queen or the king, but it's just too immature at this point. You just got to give it time. It will it will grow. And in terms of gold, just to go back to that and touch on it really briefly, I know this morning, I think it was sitting at 1700. Correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. <laughs> no, yeah, just um, above 1700. You're right. Yeah. When do you think we'll ever see a 2K price? Wow. So I'm still optimistic. So go back to the beginning of this year. I honestly thought we would be above 2000 by now already. I think I had an end of year price target of 2400. So right now that's not going to happen, right? I mean, it's just the dollar is too strong. It would take a big dollar collapse in a very short period of time into year end to get us to that level. Having said that, 
there's no denying that you still have this bullish consolidation pattern on the on the gold chart. So what you can clearly see here is you have this bigger move to the upside, and then this is all sideways chop. Um, and eventually this should lead to a breakout. So I do think we could be close to 2000 by the end of the year. Um, I love the fact that this lower level is holding. If the dollar is getting near a high, which I do think it's kind of getting near a major top, then I do think gold will be an outperformer at, towards the end of the year. I just don't, it's hard to imagine it getting through this double top high into year end. I think next year it does but into year end, probably not. So I think, again, close to 2000 by year end, you still think about, and then look for that bigger breakout next year. And I think that bigger breakout will be accompanied with a realization that the Fed, the economy has weakened so much, but inflation is still higher than 2%. But as the economy weakens more and more, the Fed can't tighten anymore um, mm -hmm. to control inflation. And eventually, I think the Fed will even go back to lowering rates and printing. But that'll be down the line when things get really, really bad. But yeah, I, I think for me, it's it's been more of a nimble market. So it's there's for me, there's still a lot of trading opportunities, but I'm recognizing the quick moves in this market. And so I was long a few tech stocks over the last few days. I've been unloading those. And now I've actually started to short the S&P and the NASDAQ a little bit here after such dramatic near-term gains. But for me, it's again, it's much more of a very short-term swing trader mentality where eventually I think the, the NASDAQ and S&P are going to break sharply lower. We're going to take out the June lows, maybe by year end even. But there's going to be so many of these crazy whips up and down in the near term that it's much more profitable to kind of play them the ups and the downs. So, so I'm still trading a fair amount. But but I agree, if, if you're someone out there who has to be a little bit more careful, maybe you don't fully understand the charts, you've got to be really careful in this market and you should be sitting mostly on the sidelines. Once the terminal rate, still a matter of disagreement among central bankers, is reached, some economists project it will likely stay at that level until inflation comes down significantly, possibly to the Fed's target rate of 2%. Yet projections by the Federal Reserve's own top officials are estimating rate increases through 2023. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.